So we have the sign in and sign up button set up. Once the user clicks the sign in button, he is taken to the sign in screen where we'll just create another button which allows the user to complete the sign in process. So here in the sign in screen, on top, we'll again import in the button from React Native and also we'll import in async storage to store the user's token. Let's replace this text with the button. And we'll pass in a title here which says complete sign in. And when this button is clicked, call this dot sign in. Let's set up this method. So there's sign in. Again, we'll say it's an async method. Here first we'll store the user token into our async storage. So we'll say await async storage dot set item user token and let's just set it as my name for now. Once that's stored, we'll navigate the user into the app. So we'll say this dot props dot navigation dot navigate and we'll take the user to the app route, which if you come here to the app.js will be added to our create switch navigator. So let's add our app route here. And this route is going to be a draw navigator. So we'll say app draw navigator. And let's go ahead and create this navigator. So just for simplicity, I'll also add this navigator here in the screen. So here, let's say create draw navigator. And below the auth stack navigator, I'll say const app draw navigator, create draw navigator. It'll have one screen as of now, which is the home screen. And let's just have a look at our notes here. So in our app draw navigator, we had said we want the root component to be a stack navigator. And inside that stack navigator, we need a tab navigator. So let's go ahead and create this and then you'll see why we need it like this. So here our home screen should actually point to a stack navigator. So we can call that the app stack navigator. Let's go ahead and create this navigator now. So we'll say const app stack navigator is equal to create stack navigator. And this navigator inside it will have the tab navigator. So we have the draw navigator, which has a stack navigator which has a tab navigator inside it. So let's go ahead here and import in the create bottom tab navigator. So we've got that imported and inside our app stack navigator, let's create our first screen as the app tab navigator. And we'll make it point to the app tab navigator. So it's a screen app tab navigator. And we need to go ahead and create this tab navigator as well. So here on top, let's say const app tab navigator is equal to create bottom tab navigator. As of now, we'll only have two tabs. The first one can be the home screen, which points to the screen named home screen. And the second screen will be the settings screen, which points to the screen named settings screen. So let's go ahead and create these two screens now. So in our screens folder, let's create the first screen, home screen.js. As always, let's import some boilerplate code, call that home screen. And let's create the second screen, which is settings screen.js. And here, let's import that in. And let's import both these screens here at the top. So now we have both the screens loaded in. And let's just go over what we just created. We had a create switch navigator inside which we created an app route, which points to the app draw navigator. That app draw navigator in turn has its first screen as the app stack navigator. The app stack navigator has only one screen, which is the app tab navigator. So that way we get a draw navigator, which has a stack navigator inside it, which in turn has a tab navigator inside it. So let's click on sign in and complete the sign in. So as we can see here, we've come to our home screen, which is inside our app route. So we have a draw navigator here and we also have these tabs at the bottom. And the advantage of having a stack navigator in between the draw navigator and the tab navigator is that we get a common header on top here. So irrespective of which tab you're on, you still get this common header. So what we can do is here in our create stack navigator for our only screen that we have, we can pass in something known as navigation options. The navigation options takes the navigation object as a parameter. And in turn, it returns us some properties. The first one is title. So we can use this to set the title of the app here in the header. So let's call that your app. Then we can pass it a header left property, which will help us set up the left icon. So for our left icon, we need to import in a couple of things. The first thing would be touchable opacity from react native. And the next thing would be icons. So we'll import icon from react native vector icons. And the icons we're interested in are the ionicons. For those of you using Expo, this is included by default. 
However, for people using vanilla React Native, they can just install this dependency called React Native Vector Icons. Once we have that installed, we can pass in a touchable opacity here with an on press, which will utilize the navigation to toggle the drawer open. Inside that, we'll have a view, and then we'll have an icon of name MD Menu with a size of say 24. There we're getting our icon and our title. Let's just paste the icon out a little. So we'll say style and give it a padding horizontal of say 10. There we see our icon is in a much better place. Now, if we click this icon, you can see we can toggle the drawer open. And irrespective of which tab we're on, we always have that menu bar on top. So now we've got our app flow set up. And if you notice, if we refresh our app right now, we still end up in the home screen. That's because our async storage holds the user token. Let's go ahead and create the sign out method to sign the user out of the app. So come to the settings tab. Here, let's import in button from React Native and also async storage. Let's pass that button in here. Give it a title of sign out and pass in an on press, which will call the sign out method. Here on top, let's create that sign out method. Again, it'll be an async method. The first thing we'll do is async storage dot clear. This will clear anything stored in the async storage. And then we'll say this dot props dot navigation dot navigate. And the screen that we're interested in is the auth loading screen. Now, if we save that out and go into our settings tab, we see we have a sign out button. Clicking on the sign out button clears our async storage and you see we come back to the authentication screen. Now if we refresh, we'll always stay on this screen until we sign in again. So that completes this short series on structuring your app with React Navigation version 2. I hope you guys like this and please like, share and subscribe.